What's up guys, Awkward Arsic here, and I'm back with another Horror Movie Club episode, and I have a very special guest with me. Who are you? <laughs> what are you doing in my house? Oh, uh, well, let's just leave. <laughs> I am, hey, it's Rich. So what does your channel focus on? Right now it's doing a little bit of a reconstructing. I'll be doing just video games and comic books, so cool. that'll be that. Sounds good, so check it out. So today we're going to be talking about Trick or Treat, one of my favorite horror movie anthologies ever made, if not my favorite. And wow. Rich has never seen it before, so it's going to be a discussion, but also an interrogation mm, as to why fuck. he hasn't seen it I before. I didn't know it was going to be this. Thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's been a lot of anth anthology films that have been out. You have VHS, you have Night Gallery, Tales mm. from the Crypt, the mm. Twilight movie, Creep Show, of course. But Trick or Treat is the, one of the more recent ones. No theatrical release. They What's going on, Warner Brothers? Warner Brothers? They okay. randomly pulled it, and they never brought it back to theaters. And they just released oh, it on DVD. Shit. So that is why wow. it goes over so many people's radars. And that's why I wanted to talk about it with you guys and with Rich. Mm. Because if you haven't watched it yet, I'm going to just cut to the chase and say, go watch it. Don't watch this review if you haven't seen it. Yeah. Because we're going to go into the nitty gritty details. Yep. Of a lot of the scenes, a lot of the stories. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Just yesterday, I finally watched it. Man, I mean, it's fresh in our minds. I'm sure, mm -hmm. for a lot of you guys out there, I'm sure you remember the stories. But if you haven't watched it recently, I definitely recommend watching. Because the more I yeah. watch it, the more I enjoy it. And I've seen this movie, I don't know how many times, 10, 15 times. We have four stories, right? Yes. We have slutty werewolves. Yes. We have Sam Hain trying to uphold these Halloween traditions. Right. You have this crazy father and son that love jack-o'-lanterns. Yep. And then you have the zombie children. From those four stories, yeah. which one did you like most? Which one did you like least? And then we'll kind of get into the overall big picture in a bit. Kind of sucks to say like I actually liked all of them. But if, oh, I, had to, if I had to choose one that's least, that kind of caught me off guard. Yeah. I would have to say it was the father and son one. Okay. The one I love the most. He's the face of Trick or Treat, yeah. as it's the Sam story. Sam Hain. And I love, I love it just because he interweaves through all the other stories. Yeah. He's basically the main overarching um, story here. Yeah, and that's, that's what I think as well is so clever. And that's definitely my favorite as well mm -hmm. because it, it is such a big piece in every single story, exactly. like you said. But it's the essence of Halloween embodied in a character. You freaking took it right out of my right? mind. Right? He is. Aggressive and ruthless, mm -hmm. right? He has his little... Uh, Halloween lollipop that's mm -hmm. kind of jagged and he's killing people. Yep. But like you said, he's so cute and small that it's just the the perfect. You can't um, just not like him, right? You know what I mean. Whereas in Chucky, yeah. Chucky is a doll where you're like, he's scary. Sam's yeah. scary also, but you you're like, fuck you, Chucky. I want to yeah, kill you. Exactly. Whereas Sam is like, oh, you're so awesome. Right? Oh, you killed a person. Nice. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and, just... and he's only killing people. That aren't upholding that. Exactly. So it's like a tradition, rush, right? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. okay, you trick a tree, you're wearing a costume, you're yep. good to go. No worries, he'll walk right by you mm -hmm. like he did with um, that. Uh, Rhonda. Yeah. The whole feeling of these traditions is kind of carried throughout. Right. And that's why I would say this is definitely my favorite anthology film because I watch it every Halloween. Nice. Every year. I feel like if you watched it many more times, you'll pick up certain little things. Yeah. And so for me, I, I've only seen it once, so I'm definitely going to go rewatch it again. Because this movie's freaking awesome. I'm this so movie, I'm This so movie's so freaking awesome. Especially having watched... We're not... We're not gonna talk. We're not gonna talk about it. But after watching it and jumping onto this, I was just like, I had more fun watching yeah, this movie. Exactly. And and that's the thing about this movie is, it's under the genre of horror, right? Mm. I think a lot of people kind of go into a horror movie expecting always to be scared, right? Yeah. And I think with it, the reason why we might not have enjoyed it as much, and I'm, it, we have very similar opinions on it. It was a great movie, mm. not a great horror movie. Mm was because it went in with the intentions of scaring you, and it failed. Yeah. Trick or Treat doesn't go in with the intentions of making all. you get scared, making Not you feel uncomfortable. All. It makes you feel like there's very dark moments in it, actually, with a very lighthearted tone, and I yeah. think that's like the perfect balance. And I think captures that essence of Halloween is fun. Yes. Even though it is Halloween, it, there, there's a sense of fun when, you know, people celebrate Halloween. They should just make Halloween a freaking holiday. Right. Just make it a holiday, guys. Right. What? We need double pay on Halloween, guys. Why not? We need, it's freaking why not? If Thanksgiving's a holiday, why isn't exactly. Halloween a holiday, guys? Exactly. Come on, right? For me, I love the non-linearity of yes, this movie. Yes, And I can pick up things very quickly once okay. I start watching the movie. So for me, that one, again, Sam being in all the stories yeah. was, I thought, was a great uh, choice. And if you guys aren't familiar with this, in an interview, 
Of course, Trick or Treat 2 is not out yet. Why? Why? And he's been saying he's working on it, yeah, he's developing I, I it, and I, I understand uh, creative minds are going to take a while for certain things, that, you know, good things take time, but man, it's been a while, and he said his idea is doing Halloween, he did Krampus, he wanted to do the other holidays, and then bring them all together in one movie. Ooh, so imagine seeing Krampus, Sam Hain, this like demented version of like, a, that would be interesting. Uh, a Easter bunny. He's creating his own universe. Exactly. Hold on, I gotta recollect my thoughts because now I'm thinking about this universe. Uh, yeah, there's a leprechaun. Oh wait, that's a movie shoot. also. <laughs> leprechaun in the hood. I kind of wanted to ask you about the darker aspects, right? Because you have Charlie, who the kid that's stealing candy, destroying jack-o'-lanterns, and you have oh, this right, crazy right, right. dad, right? Yeah. Giving him candy, he's like, always check your candy. And then like he just they throws just, up. Yeah, it's cross like... Whoa! And it looks like black Holy vomit at first, but when he brings him into the house, there's a lot of blood too. Yeah. So it's a combination of chocolate and his like internal right, organs exactly. coming out. That aspect is so dark, but then you have the father kind of carrying him in all clumsily and the music is very lighthearted. Mm -hmm. And um, same goes for when he's in the backyard burying the kid, yep. slices his finger off and feeds it to a dog. It felt like they did such a good job kind of balancing that mm -hmm. fun and darkness. Mm -hmm. For me, I know where that fine line is, where that cheesiness gets like, oh, it's way too, yeah. Yeah. way too cranked up. And I think with this, even though I didn't know what I was going in for, I had a sense of what this movie was about. But after seeing the first mini story mm -hmm. and then jumping onto the father and son, I think I already knew what I was, what they were trying to go for, Got and it. from that point, that scale of balance was already set. For me, again, I think this movie is genius. If I were to like rate this movie, I'd probably go like eight point five. Yeah. But uh, I can even argue to myself that I can make it a nine. So the yeah. only two other stories we kind of didn't really go into a little bit more is the zombie children, right? Mm. I like the look of the zombie children a lot, mm. and I yeah, like that too. whole story. The only thing I don't like about that story, and this is my only complaint in the whole film, I didn't like the actors, actors and actresses that were the kids. The actual well. kids who played the press, yeah. right? Yeah. Their acting wasn't the best, and their kind of friendship didn't make you feel like, okay, why are these three kids together? Even though I did catch on that, I didn't really mind it. Yeah. I was more taking it all, taking in. it all in. And on top of that, I was more uh, invested in the actual story of what was happening, which I thought was just like, oh, this is your typical. Someone plays a prank. Man, I was just imagining, we, we mentioned it already. Yeah. Um, take like three of those kids, put them in this scenario, pranking another friend. Mm. That would Immediately work way, it would be way just better. that banter, Absolutely. that chemistry. You'd be like, oh, this is a great friendship. Then we move into the final story, which is them slutty werewolves. Boop, 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 boop. What did you think of that? That's actually my second favorite one. Good. A good couple twists and turns and you're just like, what? I thought it was this way, but yeah. it was actually that way. As so you have Anna Paquin as dressed as a uh, little red riding hood. Mm -hmm. You go and you still don't know what the hell's happening, and then you she finally meets the, the vampire dude. It's actually them that's like, you know, killing all these people, but yeah. at the same time you're like, what are they? Yeah, because at first know. you're just like maybe they're a cult, right? You're like, like okay, cool. If anything, you're the way the scene is directed, the way the scene is told or the story is told is that once you get to the party, it seems like they're witches. Oh, I didn't even think about that. It seems like honest. they're witches, yeah. they're, they're a cult, and they're doing some kind of sacrifice, especially after you see all those dead bodies. But then, that's another turn, you're just like, they're not witches. <laughs> they're werewolves. They're werewolves. And, and I'm just like... That transformation, I love. Like, using their awesome. fingernail, <laughs> ripping their flesh, mm -hmm. very raw. So yes. it's like cool, because you have these very sexual, attractive women, right? Yeah. But then to just rip off the entire arm piece mm -hmm. and see it just fall on exactly. the ground. Very cool contrast once again. Exactly. And in a way, it's kind of a symbolization of like, when women go through their uh, monthly thing, in, in a lot of ways, their mood starts shifting. Got it's it. for everyone there who has a girlfriend. In, in your case, you've experienced it. <laughs> guys, you know, for a frost guy. Hot right? dog, hot <laughs> dog's scary when she's changing. See, this guy's coming in, throwing stuff out there that I didn't even think about. I love this. I love getting other people's perspective. Yeah. That's that's such a good observation. I really yeah. like that. <laughs> I, there's really nothing that I dislike. I think if anything, I dislike the fact that this movie isn't told in a linear way, and that might turn off some people. I'm not saying people are stupid, but sometimes it takes 
it takes a little bit more yeah. for them to... Uh, I need to rewatch this movie once yeah. more. I think if this movie was developed now and Blumhouse saw this movie made, they would produce it and they would definitely release it. This movie would have been, in my opinion, a huge hit and it would have created a new character that we haven't... We haven't seen an iconic horror character in so many years. That That is completely new. Of course, Pennywise is back. Yeah. Uh, Freddy and Jason keep trying to come back and their yeah, movies yeah. aren't that b that good. Not just a character that you're like, oh, you, that you love to hate. This is a character they actually love to love. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm so happy you enjoyed it. <laughs> I, yeah, no, I did. Um, I enjoyed the hell out of it. For those of you guys that haven't seen it, let me know in the comment section down below, you know, did you even hear about it before seeing this video? If you have seen it, let, let us know what you think. I'm really curious. I want to have a conversation with you guys because this is a movie I can talk about forever. Me too. Till the end of time. Me too. When I'm 90 years old, if I actually, I'm not gonna survive till I'm 90. So once again, guys, definitely check out Richard's channel. It's Hey It's Rich. Reconstructing, but yes. And then if you guys enjoyed this, please hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. There's gonna be a ton of Horror Movie Club episodes. I wanna try to bring on more guests. I wanna bring back Rich. I wanna, of course, have Hot Dog join in on the conversation. Maybe some of his friends. That I that I know as well that haven't seen very many horror movies just to talk about things I think with that people, would be right? New that perspectives, and yeah. I think instead of you guys hearing me talk all the time, I know I'm <laughs> boring, all right? But You're not boring. Ah. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys. I don't know when, but I'll see you guys. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye.